Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How's everybody doing? Well, this is your winter 2022-2023 outlook. We have all the factors lining up here. This is a unique winter. We can't focus on any one thing. This winter is reminding me a little bit of the winter of 1995-1996. It was a La Nina winter, and it was very unprecedented because we had a lot of unique factors coming together for that. I'll go over on that later in the video here. Two to 300% snowfall totals across parts of the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic. Will we see anything like that? Will we have a triple La Nina? This is the first time this is happening this century. The previous totals uh, where we had triple La Nina like this were 1954 to 1957, 1973 to 76, and 1998 to 2001. We have a starting out with a moderate La Nina, then transitioning to weaker, negative NAO index, variable PDO, positive PNA. We'll go over that. Siberian snow covers nearly at 100%, and I'll show you the map of that. That's crazy to even think about. That's a big factor. Tonga volcano eruption. It was underwater at the beginning of this year, so it released a lot of water. Not too much material, but a lot of water into the atmosphere. Polar vortex remain weaker than average. That's actually good if you want snow and cold because pieces of it will be allowed to break off into eastern North America as we go through the winter. So that is interesting. Let's get into it here. So taking a look at the ENSO index here, we are essentially at a negative one here. So this is a moderate La Nina. And as we go forward in time, that will pretty much stay in trends here, at least through December into parts of January, we'll start to moderate it towards February to minus 0.5 on average. And look at this. It's interesting to note here as we head towards summer of 2023, we head towards a neutral index and we might start heading towards a weak El Nino. Popular storm tracks for this winter. So I think we'll have a lot of systems moving into the Pacific Northwest here with this moderate La Nina to start out transitioning towards a weaker La Nina. Lots of chances for mountain snow, valley rain. Definitely not good for the drought here in the southwest California down through Texas here. Just dry and warm. Florida here will be warmer than average. Most of the deep south here will be normal. So you'll see a normal winter. Uh, north of this line, you'll see wetter than average here into the southeast. And on the base of this trough, this is where we'll see a uh, battleground going on between lots of snow, mix events, some rain events. So back and forth between big temperature extremes, even up here into New England here as well. Now, on the northwest side of a lot of these tracks, this is where we'll see a lot of snow happen. And I'll show you on the snowfall map. Here in the upper Midwest, it's going to be downright frigid, cold, and snowy. We'll see lots of these polar vortexes break off. It's going to be a weaker than average polar vortex, which should help these pieces of energy break off and head southeastward across parts of the eastern North America. This should help get a lot of systems cranking here from uh, the Ohio River Valley the Appalachians, I-95 corridor, and coastal systems here as well. And we'll have plenty of systems eject out of the Mississippi River Valley and head up through parts of eastern Canada. So your snowfall map, here it is. Winter 2022-2023, look at this. So we got the below average here across the southwest. This was a given from the start. Unfortunately, it's not going to do anything for our drought. Our drought's going to continue to get worse out here from California to Arizona, Colorado, these areas, Nevada. But in the Pacific Northwest, things will get a little bit better with the drought situation. We have the systems riding into the Pacific Northwest, 10 to 25% above your average snowfall from the Cascades on eastward. I think this will be mostly elevation driven because of the warmer air coming from the Pacific initially. However, once these storms start diving to the south here across the plains, you're going to start to bring down some colder air as well. Some of these clipper systems to the north, as well as some of these storms that form on the east side of the Rocky Mountains, I think you'll see a solid 25% above your average here across the northern upper Midwest into the Plain states. And look at this. Some of these storms could dive south here into the mid-Mississippi River Valley. I think this is enough to bring some cold air and put you at about 25% above your average here as far south as northern Arkansas here into the Ohio Valley. Some of these systems that eject here west of the Appalachians. This is where things get very, very interesting. This is the 50% area here. This is essentially from Detroit, Chicago, Indianapolis, this triangle up to Toledo, and then northwestern Ohio, Western New York, and then into southern Ontario and Quebec. You're no stranger to these heavy snow events the last couple 
winters with La Nina. I think that will continue and I think that will increase in time. Lake effect snow outbreaks behind these systems with this really cold air crossing the warmer than average Great Lakes, I think that's going to continue to pile up the snow as we head throughout the winter as well. So definitely want to watch for that. Now, the rest of upstate New York, eastern Ohio, the Appalachians, even heading down into parts of the southern Appalachians here. This is interior sections 25% above your average here. This is where things really get interesting because a lot of the systems will ride to the west. You'll provide you with mixed precipitation to rain, then back to snow, or you'll get some interior uh, lows, I think the one of the popular tracks will be just west of the I-95 corridor where it'll turn to all snow, places like the Susquehanna River Valley from Binghamton down to Harrisburg, Wilkes-Barre area. This is going to be a very interesting winter. Now, coastal lows, I think some of the popular tracks will be right in this region. Uh, initially, it's going to keep you know most coastal areas rain, but as we progress throughout the winter and get some of that colder air coming down, from the northwest, I think some of these coastal storms, I think you could get some pretty decent coastal storms here from Boston down to New York City, Long Island, Philadelphia, and down to Washington, D.C. Now, if you know here, Washington, D.C. up to Philadelphia, New York City, Boston, you're literally right on the edge here between the 10% above your average and the 25%. So definitely want to watch out for that. It's going to be an interesting winter as we head forward. Even down to Norfolk here, I think you're right on the edge of about a 10% above your average stretching across the rest of southern Virginia and to North Carolina here. But as I said before, the spine of the Appalachians here, northward 25%, I think is pretty well a solid guarantee at this point. So definitely an interesting winter as we go forward here. So here's the temperature outlook. Uh, yeah, this is definitely a given out here above average temperatures from Oregon all the way down to Texas here. Even though Oregon will see slightly above average precipitation here, you're going to see above average temperatures is that ridge pushes those storm systems into the Pacific Northwest instead. Above average here in Florida. Now, take a look at this. This darker blue area. You know, the lighter blue is negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit, but we start to get significant here into the darker blue, negative 1 degrees Fahrenheit below your average. That's pretty significant if you extrapolate that out over, say, four or five months here. Um, plenty of cold air here into the darker, into the purple zone here, negative 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Plenty of pieces of the polar vortex. Polar vortex will be weaker than average this winter, which should help pieces of it break off and head southeastward across parts of eastern North America. And look at that. Into the fuchsias and pinks here, negative 3 degrees Fahrenheit below your average. That is stretching from the upper Midwest into parts of the Great Lakes here. Definitely enough cold air if we can get that moisture for snowfall. All right, so looking at your total precipitation, this is snowfall, ice, and liquid all combined. So this combines it all for you and breaks it down right into a nice convenient map here. As I said before, well, with snowfall, with total liquid precipitation, it's going to be below your average here across much of the southwest into southern Texas. That's pretty much a given. Now, Pacific Northwest... You're definitely going to see about, look at this, interior sections. Would not be surprised if you get upwards of 25 to 50% above your average. And look at this. Definitely looking at a lot of wet events mixed with snow events here from the mid-Mississippi River Valley up to the Ohio River Valley. You're looking at about a 50% above your average. Definitely wetter, uh, more precipitation than average, as well as up here in the northern plains as well. So definitely want to watch out for that. Um, and then as we head Eastward here across the northeast interior sections, I think you're going to get upwards of about 25% above your average total liquid equivalent here. And then coastal sections here, you're going to be looking at about 10% above your average. So those popular storm tracks really heading up here uh, just west of the Appalachians as well. We'll have a few here definitely along the I-95 corridor. A lot of this precipitation will be following is mixed you know, as we go in time. So definitely interesting precipitation looking well above average in many areas. And here it is. Here is the official maps. Take a look at this. Yeah, this is a pretty expansive, the triple La Nina continuing into a third winter here. This essentially means we are having moderate and eventually it will moderate a little bit as we head throughout the winter, uh, as I showed you in that graph before. 
So taking a look at snow cover here, look at over here in the Northern Hemisphere, most of Siberia is covered almost 100% snow coverage and snow when you see stuff like that that's when you know here into eastern north america that is a positive signal for heavier snow and cold and look at this here into northwestern north america as we translate that that could help push pieces of the polar vortex which is weaker this year helping to push this across the eastern part of north america bringing more cold and snow and as we go in time here take a look at this i'll just fast forward this in time you can see this takes us to around mid-November here on the GFS. You can see, yeah, there's some northern rocky snow. But let's take a look. The medium-range CFS model here as we go out in time. Take a look at this. So, yeah, we could potentially, this is Friday, November 18th. Look at some of these signals coming back here. Not to say this is going to happen. But look at this. This is towards Thanksgiving here. Look at parts of the northeast looking upwards of snow cover here. And that's really intensifying as we go. Look at that. Yeah, the trends towards the end of November. We've got some snowfall here into much of northern part of North America and central part of North America. So definitely a very interesting time here as we go forward the trend. So here we go, the polar vortex. So as we head throughout the month of November, you can see how this polar vortex, it is weaker, which if you want snow and cold in eastern North America, that's what you want. Because as we head towards the middle part of November here, we're going to see those parts of the polar vortex slowly break off and head southeastward across parts of North America. You can see it anchored right here, just north of North America, right over Greenland northern tip of Greenland, and this is going to help push all this cold air across the eastern part of North America as we go forward. So a analog year such as 1995-1996, it was a La Nina year. Uh, this is what a La Nina year, an extreme La Nina year, could end up resulting at. You know, this is, this is an outlier, but it can happen. And I wanted to show you this to you because look at this. This into the purple here, Winter 95, 96, this is where you saw 300% above your average snowfall. The darker blues here, 200 to 300%. Even the lighter blues, 150 to 200% above your average. I just wanted to put that out there for you because this is one of the analog years that's popping up for this year. And it is very possible to get years such as this. Not that we're forecasting such a year, but this was a very very popular La Nina year to go by here because this is what you know essentially if the right conditions come together you can have this kind of snowfall output. As always I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Media Mark. Also Weather Northeastern. Also Hurricane Northeastern. You can like me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. Don't forget my localized page at Susquehanna Weather on Facebook. Don't forget, question or comment down below. Smash that like button, share, subscribe, and that notification button.